name is Tamara Chambers and this is Tamara's Never Seen. And today is the first video of Tamtoberfest. And I'm very excited about it. And I might just not sound excited about it right this very second because I already filmed this video and the microphone didn't work. And it's fine. It's not a big deal. I'm not very angry about it. Today I'm watching Casper. I was talking to some friends about it and they were like, oh my god, you're gonna have literally the best time with that movie. You're gonna have such a crush on some guy, Devin, Charlie, Carol, I forget his name. I already did this once today, huh? And then I went and worked out. So my hair is disgusting and sweaty. And here we are! I'm not mad about it at all! Let's get to it! Yeah. Tamtoba Fest! <laughs> not so fast, little man. The bitch is back! It's me. I'm the bitch. Sorry, I didn't mean to yell at you. Don't leave. I had an unexpectedly good time with this movie. And the only thing that really took away from me was I just didn't like Casper. The friendly ghost? More like the creepy flirtatious ghost. The friendly ghost, more like, I don't want you to keep me ghost. The friendly ghost, more like, I just didn't have a third one, so went with the tried and true Wonder Woman sword bit. Hilarious every time. There were a few plot holes, but that's to be expected, you know, for sure. I'll be clear also that I didn't hate Casper. I just found him very creepy in some individual moments. The level of flirtatious sexual energy that he was putting out was astounding for a 12 year old and not in a good way. <laughs> the whole thing is really that Casper wants a friend and always scares these friends away. And I relate to that very much. Very, very much I, please stay with me. Time passes and the worst character that I've ever seen in film, I think, inherits the house. And she's got a little henchman, Dibs. They go to the house and are very disappointed to see the condition it's in, mostly that it's haunted by four ghosts. So they call in an exorcist to get rid of the ghosts. And this scene is mwah, amazing. And isn't that the same guy that voices the dynamite man from Atlantis? Is it or is it not? I wrote, oh my God, my favorite Ghostbusters appearance ever. Amazing. So Casper has scared away the new tenants as well. Again, he just scares them all away. He sees a small little floating sperm and it's scary. So he sees this ad <laughs> on TV for this ghost therapist. And he's like, great, great, great. He shows the evil Cruella DeVille character. What's her name? Channing Tatum? Chancellor? Dominican Republic? I don't know, you guys, what her name is. So she calls, oh, it's gonna bother me so much, Kerrigan. So Harvey, this ghost therapist, and his daughter Kat move into the mansion. She doesn't believe in ghosts. She's like, whatever, dad, as if, you know? Very 90s. Then they see Casper for the first time, and they're both super scared, and the dad's like, I'll protect you, honey, and he's about to run off, and she's like, wait, dad, I'm sorry I didn't believe you, and it's really cute, and I really enjoy their relationship. Okay, but the physics of Casper, let's talk, let's get into some physics. Sometimes Casper can go through things, and then sometimes Casper picks up things. So is it like a flex thing? If like Casper's flexing, then he can like grab it, but if he's not flexing, it just like phases through him? What is the physics there? Tell me, tell me, tell me, because it's not explained at all. And that's what the kids watching Casper really want to know. Then you meet the three ghosts, the uncle ghosts. They're very annoying. I don't really enjoy them until the very final 20 seconds of the film. There is one point though where they knock the dad out and then they all enter him via his mouth and it's very unsettling, especially the bigger ghost going in the dad's, it looks dirty. I don't know why, I don't know what it really looks like specifically, but it's specifically pretty gross. Then they morph the dad's head into other people's heads to scare him. And there's Mel Gibson and Clint Eastwood and that skeleton from, what, Tales of the Crypt? What is that from? Where, where are you from, sir? At one point, the bigger ghost goes, are we scary or what? Do you just say that to yourself casually and to others? I don't like sit at my home like editing and then just randomly go, am I diabetic or what? It was stupid, I hated it. So Casper makes them breakfast, it's very cute, wins over Harvey and Kat, and there was a lot of flirtatious actions happening, but I didn't know to the extent it was gonna go, I thought maybe it would just end there. So in Kat's first day of junior high school at this brand new school, the teacher and all of the class 
offer her up and her home, her creepy ass home, as like the place where their Halloween party is going to be thrown. That's a very big assumption, I feel like, to be like, no, this is gonna be cool with your dad. Let's just do it. All right, on the count of three, we're all gonna vote. Yes, it's, I didn't even count. We're doing it. Casper really wants to be Cat's date. That was my first clue of like, oh man, I thought he just wanted a friend. He was like, if I was human, would you go to the dance with me? And then she falls asleep. And then he kisses her on the cheek and is like, can I keep you? And it's like, what? <laughs> Rewind, what was that? Excuse me, can I keep, does he mean that he wants to kill her and then harvest her body for organs and then like keep her? Does he want her to be a ghost and so he can keep her? Does he just want to keep her in a cage? Does he just want her to live in the mansion his whole life? What? <laughs> That's such a weird line. I feel like they could have used any other line. She kind of downplays the flirtatious actions though. And she helps him find out who he was as a kid. His dad was an inventor, which is why the house is so cool. So they find this Lazarus resurrection machine and there's enough potion to bring back Casper to life. I wrote down, is Casper gonna come back to life? Cause that is not where I thought this movie was going. I thought Casper, the friendly ghost, there's gonna be like some ghost shenanigans. It's gonna be really cute and fun and just kind of like maybe boring. In no way, shape or form did I think that Casper was going to come back to life. Kerrigan steals the potion though. She was going to kill her partner Dibs, but then instead she dies because she falls off of the side of a cliff. It happens to the best of us. Dibs is like, actually, I'm not gonna resurrect you. Instead, I'm gonna take all of the money. I'm gonna buy a big house with purple walls and green carpet and a little dog named Kerrigan. A bitch, just like you, and it was hilarious. Then, because of course, the dad, Harvey, falls off a cliff as well. Two in, in the span of five minutes in this movie, and I feel like maybe they could have figured out another way for one of them to die, so they like, both didn't fall off of a cliff, but you know, whatever, it's the 90s, it's a wild time. Casper gets back the potion from Kerrigan, he remains a ghost, and he gives it to the dad. Here's a question, what the f is going on with these other ghosts. You get to know what Casper looks like in real life because you, he comes back. Spoilers. He looks nothing like his ghost. And then Kerrigan and the dad Harvey, they look a lot like their ghost. And then the uncles, they look nothing like anything any human would look like. Then Harvey's wife and Kat's mom comes back as a ghost and she's not even an animated CGI ghost. She's just a human who's like backlit a lot. So she's like looking ethereal. But mom ghost comes back and she's like, I see what you did there. It's very noble and courageous and brave of you. So here, have a few hours as a real human boy. Because she has that power for some reason. Never explained why. She lets him become a boy for a couple hours so he can go down to the dance that's been going on in their house now. There's a Halloween dance for seventh graders in their home. He walks up to Kat and he starts dancing with her and he whispers, can I keep you? <laughs> it's so creepy. And then he turns back into a ghost and scares everyone in the classroom and it's great. The three uncle ghosts start up a band for some reason and sing Casper the Friendly Ghost and then Harvey and Kat and Casper dance. And it should be Casper the Sexual Ghost, but it was still very fun. You will wonder how much Dan Aykroyd was paid for that cameo. Listen, he just loves ghosts. He doesn't do it for the money, he does it for the ghosts. You'll be at war with yourself. On one side, it's classic 90s pandering, but at the same time, it actually tries to have character and emotion. Oh, so agreed. There's so many 90s cliches. I mean, the uncles is just one just 90s cliche, but I, I found myself really enjoying the, the relationships. I love this movie so much. I can't do predictions well, no matter how hard I try. Justin, that was an amazing prediction. Well done. Love, love this movie. It's one of those movies I could literally be in the mood to watch from start to finish at any time. I think your reaction will be similar to the Indian in the cupboard review. It's goofy, but has emotion. The effects and sets are very cool. But yeah, it was just fun. It was cute. It was surprisingly heartfelt. And I don't know, I feel like, how did I not grow up with this? Next week, I am watching one that's been on my list forever. I was even in the NC review of it. I'll be standing up, Monster Squad. See you soon, bye. Can I keep you?